guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video is truly one of my favorite videos to film, but also in some ways my most stressful video to film because narrowing down the books to include in this always feels nearly impossible. That's right, today I'm gonna to be chatting through my favorite fantasy books. Now, I've read a lot of fantasy books and there are a lot of fantasy series not included on this list that I also love. And I truly feel like depending on my mood, day, the season, this list could have a different lineup of books, which is also why I try to film it on a yearly basis with an updated version. Nevertheless though, fear not, all of the books on this list are five out of five star books to me. And they're also completed, either because they're a standalone or they're a completed fantasy series, which I also think is handy because we all know what it's like to wait for that next installment out there. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into my favorite fantasy books. Starting off the list, I'm just gonna go ahead and feature my fave, and that is Robin Hobb. I'm holding a bit of a loophole here, and I'm just including her entire Realm of the Elderling series, which is a compilation of many different series um, by Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb is just truly one of my favorite fantasy writers out there. Not only does she have incredibly intricate plots, but her character work is like nothing I have read before. The amount of pain this woman has put me through cannot be understated. I have sobbed, I have screamed, I have been shocked, I have been delighted, I have been heartbroken reading the course of this series. Everything about it is exceptional, but let's chat through kind of the two arms of the series and why I love it so much. So obviously we have the Fitz and the Fool line of story, starting off with the first trilogy within the realm of the Elderlings, which is the Farseer trilogy. And here we're introduced to our main character Fitz and he and us are finding out that he is actually the bastard child to the king. Due to this, he has been brought to the keep for political reasons reasons and you basically watch him grow up as kind of a higher level outsider within this kingdom. And as a young age, he begins his training to become an assassin. This first trilogy is very much like classic castle keep political fantasy. There's also though a very central quest plot line too. And in this first novel, we're really watching Fitz grow up and come into age and battle with the sacrifice of not truly being able to live for himself, but instead the crown. Of course, though, we are following Fitz through many different trilogies throughout the entire realm of the Elderly and we see Fitz not only continue to grow up, but take on new obstacles and new challenges. Fitz is a very contemplative character and through him, Robin Hobb really explores the trauma of being a chosen one character within a fantasy world. Fitz is very introspective. He feels deeply. There's also such an interesting array of relationships that are also developed through time. And of course, paired with very interesting like politics and adventure and danger too, I love Fitz, I love The Fool, and just the emotional journey I have gone on throughout the course of this entire world has just been a lot, but it's by far one of my favorite things I have ever read. On that same note, I also have to mention the Live Ship Trader series, which is the first series also set in the very same world as Fitz. Instead, this is an example of her multi-POV fantasy work. And here we're introduced to an array of characters that we read from, all set in the same trader town. And in this fantasy setting, we begin to explore some of the magic of this world. And in particular, the magic manifests in like magical wood, which are transformed into things called live ships, which are like living, breathing, ships used for trading. Again, in this first installment, The Ship of Magic, we're introduced to and read from a large cast of characters. Some are staying in town and dealing with the strife and political necessities there. Some are venturing out into the wide world to try to make a name for themselves. This book is full of such complicated family dynamics, pirates, adventure, heartbreak. The character arcs that you will experience over the course of the Live Ship Trader series is just astounding. There are characters you will despise and somehow love at the end, which I just always think is such an interesting journey to go on. But there's also characters you will love from the beginning and characters you will hate from the beginning and you'll never quite uh, veer off that course. This series, similar to the Fits in the Fool series, can be very difficult to read at times, but there are so many characters you will fall in love with and the pain and the love that you will experience. You'll just be nestled into this world. Her writing is just so good and her pacing is like no other. I love the realm of the elderlings. I love Robin Hobb. If you take one thing away from this video, please read her books. Another obvious series I'm just gonna go ahead and feature to get out of the way is the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. Probably my favorite like epic, epic, 
epic that I personally have ever read. And yes, I've read a few, but the Stormlight Archives is just so hard to put down. Plot in combination with the characters just makes the entire thing so explosive. And Brandon Sanderson, as we know, just has such a talent building not only large and expansive ever-growing plot lines, but keeping us on her toes in terms of what direction those plots are going to go in. And the Stormlight Archives, at least so far anyway, is really proving to be like Brandon Sanderson's like epic work and I have been loving every single second of it. And at the beginning of book one, we're introduced to a war and conflict and are also brought to a battlefield. A war has basically been taking place between two civilizations of people for many generations, but this war has kind of devolved from an actual conflict to just people doing skirmishes and trying to vie for the most economic resources. One of the cultures is also very war centric, which is where we're introduced to a large cast of characters. First is Dalinar, who is a general within this army and he he begins to be haunted by like visions in his sleep. Two, we follow Kaladin, who was once a surgeon, but now finds himself a slave working at this war front. We follow Shallan, who is a young, bright woman who basically takes the burden of her family on her back and becomes a scholar for a very well-known person in this world with the hopes of robbing her. And we also, along the way, as this is a very long first book and the rest of the installments are also very long, meet a large cast of characters too. Each book sort of centers a different main character, which I personally really enjoy. The concept of this sounds straightforward. Please understand that the stakes of this series are very, very high. It seems like it's just one conflict, but it's not. It's like the end of the world as we know it. And again, the plot really, really balloons. The conspiracy and all the political maneuverings, as well as just a cast of very, very likable characters. I have read this, reread this numerous times. I just love the Stormlight Archive so much. It's very, very epic and impossible to put down. Next up is actually a standalone option and a very recent read for me, which is exciting. Um, I always love when I read something that I love so much. And I knew immediately once completing this book that it was a new all-time fave. And that book is The Spear Cuts Through Water by Simon Jimenez. This has to be one of the most unique books structurally I have ever read. And there's actually another book on this list that sort of fits within that category too. But just the experience of the story as well as the story itself just completely took my breath away. This book by Simon Jimenez is supposed to mimic the experience of oral storytelling and the author does such an excellent job capturing that experience. First, we're introduced to our main character who's sitting in the kitchen of his grandmother as she recounts the story of their ancestors. From there, it blends into a story of our main character now telling this story to others, but also as he experiences the story as an audience member in a very strange and magical theater. But of course, we also read and experience the story itself as an audience member too, which this sort of interwoven layered storytelling experience was just so beautifully crafted. The story follows two young men who are basically going on a journey as they transport a divine entity and are being chased by the evil emperor and his sons. This is a story about the collapse in the end of the world. It's also about two young men trying to overcome insurmountable odds. It's also a love story. It's beautifully written and the pacing of this book is honestly breakneck, but you also just fall in love with everyone you're reading from. You are existing both in the past and the present and how those two timelines can also intermesh with one another. It's truly an experience like nothing I have really read before. I was astounded by this. I loved this. And again, a recent read, but one that made a huge impact. Next, Next up is an urban fantasy option, and that is the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. I love this series. This is the perfect combination of action packed, likable, but morally great characters, and all of the delicious family drama and family dynamics you could ever ask for. The Greenbone Saga is set in the fictional city of Kakan, and here there is a substance called jade that's only mined and sold here, and some individuals can consume jade, and it makes them stronger and faster than the average human. The manufacture and the selling of this precious resource is controlled by crime families in the area, resulting in some crime families to have immense amounts of power economically, politically, and socially. In fact, there are two prime families existing within this area, and they've been kind of in a cold war 
war for many generations. But at the beginning of book one, this Cold War is beginning to heat up. And over the course of this entire trilogy, we see how this conflict begins to play out and also balloon in directions you can never anticipate. Throughout this series also, we're reading from a slew of different perspectives from one of these crime families, and they all kind of reside in different power positions. You see the love they have for each other, the complicated feelings they have for one another, and you're also reading from other characters across this world too. It's just a story that will pull you in immediately, full of likable and complex and dark people. This book is violent and intense, and again, the family drama and the family business of it all is just so good. I also really appreciated the different angles we were able to read this story from, and the different ways in which power can be relayed, both physically, but also monetarily, or even just like socially being powerful too. There were so many things that occurred in this. It was just absolutely unputdownable. It's so entertaining and fun, but also horrifying and sad too. This journey was just excellent. I can't wait for what Fonda Lee comes out with next. The entire trilogy was a success. I loved the last book. I loved the second book. I loved the first book, which can be rare. I just have nothing but positive things to say about this. The next book I have to recommend is another very, very unique fantasy story, and that is the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, the first one being the fifth season. The fifth season and all of the subsequent books in this trilogy all won the Hugo Award, and for good reason, because this is also just one of the best things I simply have ever read. Another example of a really unique writing perspective and approach done by the author, coupled with a fascinating fantasy world and story that was just too good to not talk about for the rest of my life. This is up there as one of my favorites along with Robin Hobb. This book unequivocally like changed something in me while reading it. But if you're not familiar, the Broken Earth trilogy is set in a fantasy world that is constantly ending due to a cataclysmic event. The world is ending over and over again, resulting in civilization to adapt, to basically preserve history and knowledge even if most of humanity dies off. There is also a magic in this world where some individuals can control the power of the earth, but instead of being lauded as possible saviors or heroes, their power is very closely regulated by all government bodies within this world. And in the first one, we're introduced to three perspectives, all on their own journey. First is a young girl first discovering her powers. The second is a young woman who's just graduated from the magical academy and taking on her first magical position. And lastly, a mother who's on a journey to try to find her lost daughter. This trilogy is just truly astounding. It was an incredible ride from beginning to end. I was horrified. I was shocked. I also could not put these books down. I read each book in this trilogy back to back to back because I had to know what was going to happen next. N.K. Jemisin also effortlessly includes a huge variety of topics that I felt like she just handled perfectly from gender to identity to sexuality to the concepts of motherhood to trauma and magic. All of these things are a part of the story and explored within this story. And I just love N.K. Jemisin's writing. I love her other works and other series too. I would recommend basically everything that she has put out. The Broken Earth trilogy is my favorite of her works, but again, I love them all. Next series I have to recommend is the First Law series by Joe Abercrombie. Joe Abercrombie is another example of a fantasy writer that just has a way with characters. Joe Abercrombie writes grim, dark fantasy worlds and introduces us to a large cast of characters who are all so morally gray. We're a little confused why we love them so much because they're all terrible people. I clearly have a soft spot for character forward fantasy works. I can't help myself. That is my bias. But I just feel like the foundation of any compelling fantasy world are characters that you root for, cry for, scream for. And again, this is another example of a series that does just that. Book one and the First Law trilogy introduces us to a set of primary characters and we really get to know who they are and what they do. The first character we're introduced to is Glockta and he is an investigator and information gatherer for the government, aka he tortures people for a living. And we're also introduced to Giselle, who is a pompous, overconfident, handsome, and basically useless swordsman who's entering a sword competition, and he has dreams of glory and fame. And lastly, there's Logan, who is a man who travels south from the north, and he's kind of looking to leave his violent past behind, but of course it follows him. Book one, again, is really about establishing the characters, but the plot really does escalate in very fascinating and political ways into books two and three. I was hooked 
on every single page of this trilogy. And I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that the characters were so compelling and also entirely unpredictable. There was no way to guess how characters were going to react in different situations because they just weren't following the typical structure of a hero in a fantasy story. Keeping us constantly on our toes, both with them and just in the plot in general, I was captivated by this first trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. I've also read other books by Joe Abercrombie in this world and have really enjoyed the bloody and relentless nature of his writing style and ideas. They're hard to read, they're very triggering, but at the same time, you will just walk away being like, why do I love a man who was so terrible so much? But that is how I felt reading this and my feelings towards the character Glockta in general. Next up, I have Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the first book to the Foundry Side series by this author. I love Robert Jackson Bennett's writing. He's also written the City of Stairs series, another one of my all-time favorite fantasy series that I've had included in versions of this video in the past. And honestly, I went back and forth which one I wanted to include within this installment because I truly just love both of his series so much with all of my heart, but I decided to go with Foundry Side because honestly, it has one of the coolest, most intricate and complicated magic systems I've encountered in a long time. And that in combination with the lovely found family components and just the discussions of love and community, I just really, really appreciate it. Don't get me wrong though, this is a very dark and emotional story as well, but it is rooted with just so many likable and compelling characters along the way. And I would describe this fantasy world sort of inspired by like 15th century merchant focused Venice if you will. And in this world, there are very, very powerful merchant families, and they basically control 80% of the land of this area. And the remaining 20% is called Foundryside, and it's completely lawless. These merchant families basically have their own mini cities. They're walled, they're guarded, and people live and work there and never really leave. This fantasy world also has a very interesting and intricate magic system. I basically describe it as like magical coding. With the magic system, you can essentially break into raw materials and objects and rewrite them to function and act in a different way. You can have water run in the opposite direction. You can convince a stone wall to act weaker or there is actually a crack within their foundation. You get the idea. There are so many different creative and interesting applications to how this magic system works. And it's all about language and the interconnectedness of materials. It's so fascinating to read. In this book, we're introduced to our main character, Sansia, and Sansia is a very talented thief. And at the beginning of this book, she's basically hired to steal an impossible and very powerful object, which she does because again, she's very, very good at her job and very good at working the magic in this world. But this sort of throws her head first into the middle of a conflict between two very powerful merchant houses. And from there, she's really just focused on surviving, but she does meet up with a group of people. They're sort of the classic ragtag group of individuals trying to pull off an impossible heist and take on a larger power. I love the world the magic, the characters. There's even a fantastic sapphic romance in this series. It just has so much to offer. I love the entire trilogy as well. It ended really successfully. So yeah, I just love this series. Next up, I have the Books of Babel series by Josiah Bancroft. The first one being Sendlin Ascends. I love weird books and I feel like the Books of Babel series delivers that in every way I could possibly love. I feel like the series harnesses the whimsy and creativity of a lot of middle grade fantasy stories, but combines that with the intensity and darkness of typical adult fantasy. And what it creates is such a unique, ride from beginning to end. I was often blown away with wonder and awe with how this world worked, but was also horrified as well. Just the originality and the creativity of the entire experience of this series is unlike anything I've ever read before, and I just loved it so much. But in book one, we're introduced to one of our main characters, and his name is Senlin. And Senlin has dreamed his entire life of traveling to this massive tower called the Tower of Babel. He's read books, he's researched, he feels very, very prepared. So he decides to travel there with his new wife on their honeymoon. And unfortunately for Senlin, shortly after these two characters arrive, they get separated. And the Tower of Babel is so immense and filled with so many people. You could spend your entire life searching for someone and never actually find them again. But Senlin vows to find his lost wife. And we see him as he enters this tower and slowly makes his way up floor by floor, make friends and enemies along the way and begin to unlock the secrets of this very mysterious and mechanical 
place. The magic system and how the tower functions, I would almost describe as kind of like steampunky and mechanical, but there is this sort of shrouded mystery to the entire thing. Each floor also has a very distinct personality and like visual quality to it. It was both delightful and horrifying to explore each one and watch Senlin have to overcome various new obstacles. If you love whimsy and fairy tales and sort of that bizarreness that can come with classic fantasy stories, this is definitely a series that you should check out. Next series I have to recommend is The Legends of the First Empire by Michael J. Sullivan, another more recent completed series for me, but this was one that immediately like burrowed itself in my heart. I just loved how pastoral and homey this fantasy world felt to me. It was very classic in all of the ways that reminded me of my childhood. And while yes, I really resonated with the world and the characters in a way that felt a little bit cozy to me, this is by no means a cozy fantasy story. Please do not come away from this recommendation with that interpretation. This book has intense politics, really compelling world building and very intricate and prolonged relationship building as well. But this series is set in an ancient fantasy sort of landscape. It is supposed to be this sort of origin story experience, hence the name Legends of the First Empire. You get the sense while you feel very connected to everything that's going on that these stories, which feel very real and raw, will be transformed into these sort of legends of thousands of years in the future. The founding of the next fantasy society of this world, if you will. But in this book, we're introduced first to a small human community and they're really just focused on surviving and making the next harvest. They also worship another group of individuals called the Frey, which are basically like elven individuals and they have viewed them as gods for many generations because they have magic and they have these really long lifespans. However though, everything is sort of turned upside down when a human accidentally kills a Frey. Not only does this upend the sort of power structure of this world and the religion, but also creates the beginning of a conflict that then lasts for a very long time between humans and the fray. Throughout the entire course of this book, you see the beginnings and the evolution of human society. You see them not only transform how they live, but also create different forms of government, discover inventions, and just the wheel of civilization begins to turn. That combined with great characters, as well as just really interesting politics, honestly, some of the best written war and combat I've ever read exists within this series, just created an experience I could not put down. Each book also has a very distinct sort of personality and plotline to it. In some books, we have really intense war segments, and in other books, we're following a smaller group of characters as they go on a quest and journey together, but everything is very much connected, and the time that this series sort of takes place in also works very, very well. I just loved it so much. I laughed. I cried. Again, I just love the pastoral landscape that this whole thing sort of takes place in. It was just a really lovely experience for me and I just loved it so much. Then the last fantasy series that makes my top favorite fantasy books out there has to be the Poppy War series by R. F. Kuang. This by far is one of the most difficult fantasy series I've ever read. It's one of the most violent and horrifying fantasy series I've ever read, but it's also unflinching in its approach to try to represent the horrors of war, as well as just the realities of characters in situations just trying to survive at all costs, the trauma of war, the trauma of violence, the trauma of occupation, as well as Arv Kuang's ability to use real life and real history to inspire her fantasy world where in which the story takes place in. But at the beginning of book one, we are introduced to our main character, Rin. And Rin is a poor young girl with a dark complexion from a very poor southern province in this fantasy landscape. However, though, she dreams of getting out of her province. She dreams of not having to enter a marriage that her parents have arranged for her. So she spends all of her time studying for a placement exam that could get her opportunity to leave her small town. She does so well, she gains admittance into the most prestigious military academy in all of the land. There she arrives and she's quickly othered by every other individual there at this military school, but she excels as a student. But here she's also introduced to a very powerful magical sect of shamanism. However, though, about halfway through book one, everything is sort of turned upside down when their entire country is invaded by an outside force and war and torment begins to overcome the entire country. 
country. Ren transformed from a bullied student at a military academy to a soldier overnight, also transforming every single relationship she also had in the past. This series is very, very dark and explores a lot of different topics as it relates to war and the trauma of that experience. And in my opinion, Arv Kuang did a fantastic job. This is also housing a lot of morally gray characters, particularly with our main character, Rin, who will stop at nothing to achieve the revenge that she feels like she deserves. It is a harrowing read, but it is also excellently written, excellently plotted, and fantastically done from book one to book three, by far one of my favorite trilogies. Alrighty guys, those are my current top 10 favorite fantasy books. Please let me know down below some of your favorite fantasy series as I would love to know, and any fantasy series you feel like I haven't read yet that you feel like I could love as I'm constantly adding books to my TBR. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.